Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Matterley Basin. It's round two of the FIM Motocross World Championships, the MXGP of Great Britain. And uh, we're here in our spiritual Yay! home once again. The first studio show was in Argentina three weeks ago. And, uh, of course, that was done on the podium, but yeah. here we are in our studio area. And uh, our guest today, Mitch Evans, he's already in place. Uh, we've got Jeremy Van Horwick coming in and Adam Wheeler as well from uh, OTOR on trackoffroad.com. But, Lisa, before we go anywhere, um, home sweet home. Yeah. And... Uh, Although it's kind of uh, a bit earlier than usual, the weather is supposed to be okay, and it you is know, or certainly for tomorrow anyway. Yeah, and we were just talking, Mitch was saying, oh, it's quite dark out there. But, I mean, wishful thinking, fingers crossed there's not going to be any rain. But at the moment, so far, so good. Yeah, yeah. and the track is absolutely perfect. Well, look, yeah. our first guest is in. Honda 114 Motorsports, Mitch Evans. Had a fantastic ride in Argentina just uh, two or three weeks ago. And uh, I guess that's where we should start, really. Uh, by saying congratulations on a fantastic MX2 debut. Um, was it a bit of a surprise or is it what you kind of expected? Uh, thanks for having me on and no thank you for that. Um, yeah, all uh, winter long my goal was to be top five at round one and get solid points and I knew the, the program that we had going was really good and um, the people behind me and the people behind the team were really strong and and yeah, I just felt super comfortable as soon as I got on the bike back in December and, and everything was just clicking. So I didn't see it was a far-fetched goal of getting a top five. So um, we weren't surprised at the result, but we were super stoked with the podium for sure. And in motocross speak, I know it's only a podium, you know, it wasn't a win, but even still, it was like fantastic to lose your sort of podium virginity, as it were, you know, first <laughs> time out, um, you know, whether it's second or third. Um, yeah. From that side, has it sunk in yet? Yeah, it did. Um, but I kind of had a little bit of an injury. So yeah. um, it, it was kind of like a big high, but then we didn't want to celebrate too much because we didn't know what was going on with the injury. So, and I ended up having 10 days on the couch after it. So it kind of died pretty quick. So, mm. um, and yeah, but we're on top of the injury now and we're, we're all back into training. So we're looking forward to this weekend. Good. And how was your result received back home in Australia? Yeah, it was it was so cool to see everyone support me back in Australia. Everyone got behind me. I had so many messages yeah. and so many people to reply to. So thank you to everyone for that. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the support from back home and trying to hold it down for the Aussies. Yeah, absolutely. Some great battles here. Um, I think you're in with uh, Ben and Thomas. Uh, I mean, just two fantastic rides. The second one was slightly easier, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, a uh, bit better start in the second one, but uh, it's cool to finally be battling with them. You know, I've watched them on TV, especially all last year. I was following it really closely, so um, to finally be with them is 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 pretty cool and mm. and something that I would go to bed every night dreaming about. So I'm stoked to be here for sure. Oh wow! Now, as an Australian in MX2, our MXGP viewers might not know too much about you. Yeah. Uh, so in a nutshell. Uh, how old were you when you first started riding, got your first bike? Um, whereabouts in Australia are you from? Tell us a little bit more yes. about you. So um, I first started riding when I was three and um, I actually went down this big hill and across the road and into a ditch and then I <laughs> didn't touch the bike for like a year. So um, my brother and I just shared a little uh, JR50 and, and um, trashed it. So um, And then, yeah, f just raced juniors in, um, in Australia and then... Uh, made my first appearance at MX on in 2016 and that was a big wake-up call because mm. I was so unfit still going to school and eating cake and whatnot you know enjoying <laughs> life as a teenager and um, you I, still eat cake yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> hey gotta enjoy it while you can eh? yeah, <laughs> yeah but, and then um, yeah but since that day I just put my head down we put a plan together and we've been following it and um, it's cool to see it pay off well last year you were second in the MX1 championship in Australia yeah um, so why the decision to ride MX2 this year? Um, well, because honestly, I didn't think I was ready for MXGP over here. And as we've seen, it's really difficult to get an MXGP ride here. Mm -hmm. um, and I really wanted to come to the, to the MXGP scene and, and um, 250 was the only option, but I wasn't worried about that. Um, I thought it was great to be able to learn in the, in the smaller class and, um, and, and progress my skills a bit better and, and get stronger and fitter before I move to the MXGP class. And you mentioned it a moment ago, um, 
ride in the motocross the nation. She's been twice for Australia now. Um, one of those was in Majora. That was a, a late entry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Filling in for an injured rider. And the second one, uh, Redbud last year in the USA. How were those experiences for you? Yeah, um, well, Magiora was was tough because I got the call on Monday and flew out <laughs> Tuesday, so and raced the Saturday. So um, that was ve we were really unprepared. And actually, for that race, I'd never raced a um, 30 minute moto before. So no. um, going into Red Bud, I was way more confident and way more prepared. So I knew with two good starts, we'd be able to put. Um, Australia in a good position and that's what we did so cool. and would you say riding at the motocross of nations in front of all the crowds helped prepare you for your debut in Argentina three weeks later perhaps made you feel less nervous or? yeah definitely I like um, a lot of people were asking me oh, are you nervous for, yeah. the, for the weekend I said no I feel like I've been here before and done it before so mm -hmm. um, it, I think it definitely helped me Brilliant. Cool. Well, it showed for sure. Right. We have uh, some social media questions for you, yeah. Mitch. Uh, first one's from G Hopkins. How did you prepare for the start of the season to get such a good start? Yeah, so um, I moved to the south of France uh, at the start of December and I was working with Willie Linden, um, my trainer, and um, doing a lot of running and gym and, and just getting used to the bike. And I sort of just took the month of December to mm -hmm. get used to the bike. And then we started doing testing in January got a pretty good base and um, yeah and then started doing the pre-season races I think that really helped um, learned a lot and then I started working with um, Eric Sorby really um, focused on my starts and uh, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah I'm pretty bad at them but um, yeah we're, we're getting them pretty dialed now and um, so the program I got is really good it's given me a lot of confidence and I have a lot of belief in the people behind me and they believe in me so so it's a good program we got going. Okay, brilliant. Well, we have another one from Dean Thompson. Do you have a supply of veggie mites <laughs> and Milo with you <laughs> over there? <laughs> Hang on, wait, what is my what is Milo? What's it's like Milo? a chocolate thing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a chocolate drink sort of thing. Like, <laughs> I've never heard of it. You can have it hot or cold. So yeah. Is it a, an Australian thing? Is it Australian yeah, it's thing? Yeah, Australian then. thing. Yeah. Home comfort. Hunter Lawrence just actually called his dog Milo. No yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go, Dean. Hopefully that's answered your question. Oh, I wasn't laughing about uh, your uh, lack of starts. I was asking about uh, ask, laughing at the fact that you're teamed up with uh, Sorby. Yeah. And uh, obviously... The, the collector of wild animals and, uh, yeah. and everything else. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> did you get your cat, by the way? No, no, he can <laughs> keep his cat, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we are out of time uh, with Mitch. Uh, Mitch, thanks for joining us on our studio Thank show you. here at Matterley. Uh, all the best for this weekend and the rest of the season. Uh, the Jerry Man is in town. Uh, we'll talk to him in a moment. But before we do, let's catch up with some MX2 highlights from Argentina three weeks ago. MX2 race two, and this time it was Jorge Prado who grabbed the foxhole shot. He had 26 of those in the bag last year, so just 25 to go then, if he is to emulate what he did last year. He got up to a flying start. Behind him was Mitch Evans. Another flying start for the Australian as well, but Ben Watson, who was up in fourth, eventually faded back to 11th before climbing his way back to seventh in the latter stages of the race. Darren Sinai, who was feeling under the weather, decided to quit in race two after a crash. Hopefully, he'll be okay for Matley Basin round two. David Puches also had an off-track excursion, eventually came home in 10th on the Diga Pro Cross Husqvarna. But Olsen, another flying start for the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna rider, eventually got alongside and made the move around the Australian as he moved into second on lap five. Kevin Valandran, another good start for him. He was circulating on his own for most of the race in four. And he was lucky to get away with the odd slide here and there. Tom Vialvo was having a fantastic debut. He was up in fifth position, but he was being caught by the FNH Kawasaki's of Adam Sterry. And his teammate, Henry Jacoby. Sterry went through first, got himself into fifth. He then ran off track, but did not lose any position. Jacoby, though, kept his form from the race one intact. He then charged down the inside of Vial. That put him into sixth position, and then he capitalized on a mistake from his teammate later on in the race to move into fifth place. As Jorge Prado danced to his own tune at the head of the field. 
That was Steri going down. He eventually came home in ninth, but it was still an OK GP for the Welshman. Ben Watson recovered well to come home in seventh, just behind his teammate at Monster Energy Khmer, Yamaha, Yago Kietz, who came home in sixth place. But Olsen was no match for Jorge Prado, who went on to record an impressive double here in Argentina. Olsen was second, Evans third, and that was how the podium finished as well. Prado gets the win here in Argentina. Olsen second overall, just like he was a year ago, and Evans on the podium in his first ever MX2 Grand Prix. Valandrum was fourth, Jacoby was fifth, but it will be Prado who takes the red plate to round two. Welcome back to part two on our MXGP TV studio show here. We're live at Matley Basin, round two of the FIM Motocross World Championship. And our second guest is here, Jeremy Van Horbeek from uh, a brand new team, Honda SR Motor Blues. Uh, welcome to our studio show, Thanks. Jeremy. Uh, Jerry Man, Jerry why man. not? The, the Jerry Man. The Jerry Man. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, before we talk about Argentina, let's talk about the 2K, the beach racing. How did that all come about? Where did it even come from? I don't know, uh, because I ch actually I was just training a little bit and uh, like physically and then uh, Joe Salfang gave me a phone call and uh, he said that hey, you're interested for uh, Le Touquet. Mm. I said, I don't know, it's not kind of my thing, you know, uh, like two hours, three hours on the bike, uh, like like not really a high pace, you know, uh, but finally I decided to do it and um, it was good to be back on the bike and uh, it was really exciting uh, weekend and uh, I had a lot of fun so it was good. Well it had everything didn't it? First yeah. Le 2K. It's yeah. quite a big event for if you're in you know, Belgium and Northern France especially but you led, you yeah. crashed, yeah. <laughs> didn't finish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but did you still enjoy it? Was it, was it everything you thought it was going to be and more or was it, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. It, it was a dream of me, you know, like as a, as a young kid, but um, it was everything I thought about. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I was quite boring on some places, you yeah. know, like... What, like start straight? Yeah, and it was like really <laughs> long, you know, <laughs> like sometimes I, I, I spoke to myself because like it's boring on yeah. some places. But then afterwards it's excited because you have so many riders and you have to go uh, from, from left to right. So... So yeah, it's something uh, I I, uh, I love to do now, and uh, I will do again in uh, 2020. I uh, I agree with Joss already to do it. So after the the mix uh, GP season, I will go straight to um, sand races. Good, fantastic. <laughs> well, Lotte K was only three weeks before the first GP. Yeah. How different was it preparing for that race compared to an MXGP race? Well. Uh, that's the only preparation I had, actually, because right. uh, <laughs> I, uh, I went to the start of friends and um, I, I there they have some some Le Touquet tracks, you know, mm. and um, we just spend a lot of hours, hours on the bike yeah. and uh, the intensity is much lower, like, I don't know, 20 heart rates less mm. than uh, than the MXGP. So that's what I did many hours and, and, and only like long endurance uh, training. And um, yeah. Actually, uh, it's not uh, such a good preparation for MXGP, but uh, it was not so bad. Yeah. Like in Argentina, I missed the intensity a lot because uh, after a few laps, uh, I was like uh, with the <laughs> knife on the on the. <laughs> so finished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know it, it's good, and um, I'm I'm really happy and thankful that uh, they give me this this chance to follow to care because of that. Yeah. I, I'm here now, so. Good. Good. Absolutely. And what about the bike? How different was the setup? Wh I mean, what did you have to change to take it back from the beach bike to an MXGP bike? Wow, well, it's, it's actually I uh, Le Touquet was a stock bike. Just uh -huh. the gearing was different and the big tank. So it was right. really heavy, like 15 liters of mm. fuel uh, is a lot of fuel. And it's, it's really heavy. So um, maybe the gearing. Yeah, the gearing was different, yeah. uh, a lot different, and uh, but nothing special, you know. Um, so then after, w you know, Le Touquet, uh, three days later, we decided to, to do it, yeah. like mm -hmm. uh, a mixed GP. So we had to manage everything in a few days, uh, and it was we had only two weeks left uh, for the for the first round, and uh, the we, we tested some parts, and it was a lot different, the suspension, everything. So... I went to Argentina, <coughs> but I was not ready in my mind, mm. you know, physically and, 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 and mentally everything was good. 
but like with the bike, uh, you know, if you test three days, uh, you, you cannot say my bike is yeah. ready. So, but uh, at the end of the day, it turned out well, and um, yeah, I feel good. So yeah. we keep working and uh, enjoy it. Brilliant. Well, back to Jerry Mann in a minute. But do you know anyone that loves MXGP and would love nothing more than watching the best motocross series in the world? Then why not tell them about our MXGP TV season package, which includes live and on-demand action from every round of the 2019 season, including all the qualifying races and the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations. It's only place where you can watch every second, every week, weekend every race of MXGP live as well as MXGP there's the EMX 125 250s and 252 stroke championship WMX and our MXGP TV studio show and 26 minute highlight program <laughs> behind the gate and the best part of it do you know what it is Pauline it's commercial free it's commercial free <laughs> yay that's a lot going on in There's that package. there is a lot you get everything basically by yeah. our practice and, and that time <laughs> practice but look back with the jerry man um, Argentina what a crazy weekend yeah. um, you've touched on it a little bit third overall first time out on the Honda you walk away with a podium. Yeah, it's kind of what dreams are made of. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, uh, I was, I was feeling good uh, from the first practice, you know. Um, especially, you know, because I had no pressure and I just was enjoying myself. And then, uh, you know, Saturday went by and it was really good. And uh, I said to myself, "Hey, this cannot be luck, you know. This is, this is something you got." Yeah, yeah. And um, I just went out and had fun, and yeah. I was a bit lucky, maybe because of the crash of Romain, because you don't want to want to be on the podium when somebody crashes. But um, it's part of racing, and I wish him a speedy recovery. And uh, yeah, I was on the box, uh, unbelievable. And um, yeah, I have to. It's not about me; it's about the team, you know, because yeah. they uh, they paid all the bills to go there. They they searched all the the money for the sponsorship, and uh, so. You know, I did my job, but uh, without them, you know, um, <laughs> it was impossible. Well, we are almost out of time, but has yeah. riding for the new team, uh, working with Joss yeah. Salfranc, kind of given you new motivation to be kind of like the best Jerry man you can be? <laughs> oh, yeah, but <laughs> 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 but uh, honestly, I'm the best Jerry man I can be right now. So, uh, <laughs> All right, there, <then>, Liz. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, really, um, he, he's my age, like he's yeah. 30. Yeah. And, um, X racer as well. Yeah, X racer. And uh, it's like a family, you know, mm. he, he <coughs> we click. And, and this is just uh, the best way to ride a world championship. Um, it's like a family. Uh, we have no pressure. Uh, even if I finish 10 this weekend, uh, there will be no arguments or uh, we will keep working and, and find a way. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's the best thing, you know. Uh, I, I would even say that me being not in a factory team is better. All right. Well, look, uh -huh. uh, we've got a couple of social media questions. Yeah. Yeah. need to be really quick. Yeah. Okay. We'll now, the first time. one's from Technical Touch Racing. How big <laughs> is the difference between a factory team and a private team? Uh, it's quite big, you know, because you don't have to just grab all the parts and then <laughs> put it on the bike. You know, you yeah. have to pay them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but uh, it, it for me, it's less stressful. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I enjoy more private year life than um, yeah. than them. Um, okay. Well, the okay. next question's great. Then. Ghost Rider, if a factory team made you an offer now, would you take it? Yes or no? No. Wow. Oh. No. You're living it. Yeah. Living the dream. Yeah. Really? Well, look. Uh, oh, there's one more. One more from Andre Philippe Vergas. Why do you seem so happy with this new team? Doesn't look like the same Jeremy of previous years. And does this small and relaxed team environment suit you better? Yeah, it yeah. suits me better. It's it's clear, you know. I, I love it. And um, it's just uh, awesome to be in a private team and uh, without the stress and all the bullshit, you know. Mm. And um, Sorry about the French. Yeah, there, sorry. But but <laughs> 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 no, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just um, it's awesome. And I, I enjoy it. And... Uh, yeah, we keep working and keep doing what we love. All right, okay. well, look, uh, you. it's only round two. You've already been on the podium once. Maybe you get on the box here again this weekend. Uh, Wish you all yeah. the best. Thanks a lot. This weekend and the rest Thank of the year. You. Thanks. Jerry Mann, Jeremy Van Horbeek. Uh, right, uh, Adam Wheeler's next. He's uh, getting ready to come in. Uh, let's catch up with some highlights from Argentina two weeks, three weeks ago, actually. Here's uh, race two of MXGP. <laughs> After his impressive start in race one, Tony Cairoli once again swept around the outside, but Clement de Salle was not so lucky. He dug the front end in deep. Gauthier Paulant went over the top, and so too did Jeremy Siwa. 
but it was Julian Lieber who grabbed the second foxhole shot of the afternoon. Kai Rowley into fifth, quickly into fourth, and went after Tommy Searle, Roman Fevre, and Tim Geiser. Jeremy Van Horbeek made a fantastic start as well for Honda SR Motor Blues, and the two standing constructs weren't too far behind either. In seventh and eighth, Monticelli and Anstey in orange. Kai Rowley hung off the back of his Red Bull KTM as he charged past Tommy Searle into third. He did not want to let Geiser or Fevre get too far ahead, but it was the Frenchman who struck first into the lead before the end of the first official lap. But it wasn't long before Kai Rowley joined the party. He went from third to first in the space of about 200 metres when he went around the outside of Geiser and Fevre who had a nervous look over the shoulder, realised the Sicilian was right there, but there was no reply from the Yamaha race. Geiser then found himself into second with that move on Roman Fevre. Fevre looked content in third. Sell, though, was almost out of the race from fifth. Lucky to escape that little kick from the hole. Van Horbeek was safe in fourth position, and it was a good debut for the Honda Satellite Squad. Paul Ann was charging through the field with Clement de Salle. Eventually, they would get back to fifth and sixth. Partly because of this mistake from Roman Fevre, who hit the eject button, sent himself down the track and out of third place with about six laps to go. Hopefully, we will see him on the line at Great Britain. Van Horbeek was suddenly in third and looking at a podium. Cairoli was victorious. It was a double moto sweep here in Argentina. The first time the Sicilian has won on Argentine soil. Geiser came home second, Van Horbeek third. That was the podium as well. Anstey and Paul Ann were your top five in the race, but here's how it stood after the first round here in Argentina. Cairoli, 50 points in the books for the KTM rider. Geiser second, Van Horbeek third. And what a debut for Honda SR Motor Blues, the brand new team in MXGP this year. Van Horvick on the podium for the first time since Falkenswald 2017. Kai Rowley will take the red plate to Matley Basin, which just happens to be one of his favorite tracks. Can he hold on to the championship lead by the time we leave Matley? Welcome back to our studio show here live on MXGPTV.com. They say that's the beauty cam. There's nothing beautiful about that at the moment. A <laughs> little bit of drizzle on the lens. <laughs> but Adam Wheeler from OnTrackOffRoad.com uh, joins us now, our final guest on the show. Uh, Adam, just briefly, uh, what did you make to Argentina a couple of weeks ago? Uh, were there any surprises? Mitch Evans, personally for me, from MX2, was a standout guy. Yeah, hi, guys. Um, Surprise for me. I think it was uh, Mitch Evans undoubtedly first podium finish, but then also I think it was one of the better performances we've seen some, from Tony Cairoli, uh, mm. considering how strong 2018 was. I mean, to start where he was, I think 23rd in the gate and still be able to win. I mean, mm. we know he had a fantastic Grand Prix there last year, mm. but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the way he managed to take that, mm. that first victory of the season, I think it, it signaled everything about any questions people were asking about his motivation or, you know, can you really go for a 10th title? We didn't have their world champion there, but Cairoli was on the same level. I think he yeah. set the bench already for the rest yeah. of the benchmark already for the rest of the class. Um, obviously, Matty Basin has um, kind of got its place in history. He's thrown up quite a, a few surprises over the years um, and magical moments as well. Roman Fever has played his part, highs and lows, not here this weekend. Um, He's missing because big of shame. this injury. Really, really big shame. I mean, you know, he's made some big changes in the winter as well, working with Jackie Vimond, um, training with Ben Watson. And I think, you know, we'd seen in pre-season races, Paul uh, and Lisa, that, you know, and I think just he just changed his line coming into this section. Mm -hmm. I think it was just a little bit of unfamiliarity. You can see that big impact there on the left foot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's, a, it's broken in three places. So... We're not going to see him for the next couple of rounds, but that, that was the, and we were talking about one of the bright spots in Argentina. This was, this was undoubtedly mm. the low. But obviously, uh, we were looking forward to him being here this weekend because obviously it's a place where he took his first ever race win back in 2015. Yeah, here we are. I mean, this was uh, a debut season for Roman, you know, and only on the factory Yamaha, but in this class. Um, and it, it really all started from this Grand Prix. Mm. Um, you know, he just kicked on for the rest of the season there and finished, you know, emphatically in the United States as well as the motocross of nations. Um, you know, this, this wasn't the first podium. I think it was in Spain two Week weeks before. earlier. Yeah, but this was the first, you know, moto victory. And 
Yeah, it was Matali would, you know, but it's been it's been so good and also bad mm. for him. It was a year later where he crashed and took a concussion in, yeah. in the qualifying moto. So it's a it's a big shame he's not here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jeffrey Hurlings has played the good guy and the villain here. His battles with Tommy Searle and uh, Tony Cairoli spring to mind. How do you think his absence is going to affect the championship? Well, it's already created a space hasn't it yeah. i mean jeffrey locked this season last year the the last championship under such a kind of like vice grip um you know and he's he's got such a weird history with this this grand prix in particular i mean this this grand prix with with tommy in 2012 was was fan a fantastic dice all the way through the year and again we saw it you know in 2018 we'll probably see the pictures in a moment there, there's that crash yeah. I mean, look yeah, yeah. at the fans celebrating a crash as much as a win it well, seems like that <laughs> So, I mean, Jeffrey, I mean, we've talked about it pre-season through Argentina here as well now. You know, he's going to be missing for the next couple of Grand Prix as well until he's fit. Sometime in May before he's riding again that, that KTM 450. So, yeah, I mean, he's out of the championship picture. Yeah. It's a question of uh, what KTM can do with quite a few support bikes in the yeah. class to Tony Cairoli to try and defend that championship. Um, you know, it's a big shame we don't have the two world champions racing at the British Grand Prix mm. for, the, for round two. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would have expected that. Well, especially after the battles that they had last year, which we've got uh, action coming up from there, obviously, particularly in that first race. Um, I mean, the second one was probably more intense, wasn't it, with that last lap pass? But um, it was... It's these kind of battles that Jeffrey kind of puts himself in that captivates the crowd here, isn't it? And captivates us as viewers. Yeah, I mean, that just that attacking style. I mean, look, I mean, that move was brilliant. It was... Madley Basin last year was one of the, the closest Grand Prix. We saw um, another close dice in Indonesia. But mm. then, um, you know, this, this was first-class entertainment. This is what you want, really. Two guys right at the peak of it going at it. And it's... Uh, you know, it, it finished in somewhat controversial fashion. You know, the the, the moment coming up here with, with Jeffrey and Tony, still a racing incident. I, I've yet to. Uh, <laughs> it's always hard, you know. Every time you see it, you think, you know, was that a hurling's fault? Was that, you know, Kyro should he have kind of backed off? Really, the lines came together. But I mean, I mean, fantastic scenes. It's it's this is Max Anstey now. Yep. You know, taking the motocross of the nations uh, in 2017. Oddly, in the same kind of climate as we're seeing at the moment. Mm. So. It doesn't matter whether it's September, October, or March, Paul. It just seems uh, just mm. you know well, that's the it. same thing. Obviously, moving on to Max Anstey, um, new team, new bike, returning to the venue where he went one-one at the Motocross of Nations. Um, what can we expect from him this weekend on the Standing Construct KTM? I think good things. Yeah, good things. I mean, you know, Max is obviously a big confidence rider. Um, locally born, he's going to have a lot of uh, fans and people with memories of that 2017 event. So he's 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 been in the game long enough to know that I, I don't think pressure is going to affect him. Um, and I think he'll be kind of foolish not to draw on all this experience he had in 2017. All right, uh, moving on to MX2 briefly. Uh, Conrad Muse, Adam Sterry, uh, they're going to have huge support. But what about Ben Watson? Are we looking at him idealistically to uh, stand on the top step or... You know, any any position on the podium this weekend in his home round. Uh, obviously, he got on the podium last year in Russia. Hard yeah. pack as well that day. Yeah, fourth in the world last year. Um, had a good ride here in EMX 250 as well, Paul. So I think, you know, Ben is is probably the first from a small clutch of, of good British riders coming through. But Adam Sterry's fit. Um, he's been training well with the, you know, the, the FH&M team there. Um, you know, and also Comrade Muse, if, again, another kind of confidence rider. If he's fit and feeling it, then he's going to be challenging Ben as well. Mm -hmm. And with Jorge Prado missing mm -hmm. um, the MX2 world champion out of the action, I think there's only two riders in that class with Grand Prix winning experience. So yeah. the stage is set for somebody new like Glenn Colden off yeah. in 2013 to use this event and say, right, this is my moment. Well, like you mentioned, Jorge Prado, he had a shaky start in Argentina. He bounced back. He won both races. But would you say it would be a discredit to the other MX2 riders to say that he could have won every race, if not every GP, if he was here? I think it was looking that way. Mm. I mean, um, Tony Cairo trains with him in the winter and yeah. said that, you know, Jorge was only getting stronger. He's still only 18 years old, mm. but the way he kind of rides that bike, his technique... I mean, we were even in the in the media talking about him falling foul of the, of the rule where he can only defend the championship twice. So, you know, he might have even had to move out of into the MX2 class into MXGP. We were, we were talking yeah, about yeah, that after Argentina yeah. because his his dominance, you know, was was absolute. So, 
I think it's exciting for MX2 that you know the, the door is open for somebody else to, to try and mm -hmm. take some success mm -hmm. here, maybe even in Balkan Squad next week if Jorge's not fit. Final question. Okay, final question very briefly. Other riders who have created a bit of history here have been Geiser, DeSalle, Jonas, Valentin Gio, Glenn Koldenoff. Is Geiser um, for winning or for the throwing? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Matley has that, um, that capacity for surprises. I mean, anything can happen here on this track. It's not it? a foregone conclusion, is it, that yeah. Kairo is just going to yeah. win and uh, TKO, for instance, is just going to step into Prado shoes. Really yeah. quick. Yeah, it's just the conditions we find as well, Paul. I mean, you were saying yesterday you've never seen this track in better shape. Mm -hmm. um, you know, are we going to find a bit of a mudder? Is, is it going to be nice and tacky and loamy? It'll be great. So it starts coming down to it. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a bit of an adventure tomorrow, I think. All right. Well, look, Adam, we are out of time. Uh, thanks to Adam Wheeler from uh, ontrackoffroad.com. Uh, who do we have? Jeremy Van Horvick from uh, Honda yep. SR Motor Blues. And uh, right at the top of the show, Mitch Evans for Honda 114 Motorsports. Well, we're out of time. We'll see you back in Holland next week at Falcon Squad Round 3. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Bye for now.